Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise be to God. And this is a reply again to uh, Dr. White. Um, first of all, I apologize for the quality of my videos. I'm just recording straight from the YouTube option uh, because it, it's easier for me and it takes less time. Um, but I'll start with what you're saying. Start with what you said about um, Islam and Christianity. And um, you mentioned Ignatius. Um, and that's one of the early church fathers. This is 106 uh, AD. You said from the beginning Christianity was established. 106 and beginning is a totally different thing. Right? Um, if you go and look into, and I'm sure Dr. White without any doubt knows the, uh, the history of the Old, uh, New Testament. Um, 106 is a different date when, than when it was first uh, written down. And it's also when it was first written down, the Gospel of Mark, Matthew, uh, John, obviously, uh, towards the later uh, disputed date, towards the 100 AD. Um, and there's a difference between that and when Jesus walked. There's a difference between that and when the Apostles walked. Uh, Paul was not an apostle of Jesus. He was not someone who walked with Jesus, not someone who listened to Jesus, right? There's a whole different story. So we have to be careful to take each single point at a time. We can't just mix and say, from the beginning, 106 AD. There's a difference between 106 AD and the beginning. So please, Mr. White, make sure your statements are correct. Beginning and 106 AD is a totally different thing. Okay, so uh, there's kind of a gap there. Now, if I give you 10 years here in Canada, and we look at constitutions and we look at laws and uh, history even, and uh, for example, some of the ex-Soviet Union, uh, just in 10 years, the whole history is written by them. Everyone's learning it. Everyone, they cleared everything out. And, you know, people don't know what's happened, right? So, I mean, and the people of, of the countries like Turkey, and so many other countries in the ex-Soviet Union, they'll be swearing that that's what happened in history. Look at our history books. Look what our scholars are saying. And when you dig deeply into it, you see that the uh, the Russian power actually changed some things. Now, kind of the same thing, uh, we can, you know, I mean, we can debate that over for Christianity, but I'm just saying, there's a difference between beginning and there's a difference between 106 AD. Uh, Ignatius, uh, where these words come from that he, you know, he was talking about the, the nature of Jesus, fully human, fully, but I mean, I already discussed in one of my previous videos the problems that I have with it, not from a scriptural point of view, from a rational point of view, from many other points of view uh, which um, you know the universe around us uh, testifies to but the fact that Jesus was a Muslim he prayed like us in the sense of that he submitted to God yes he was a Muslim did he follow the same laws that Prophet Muhammad many things were the same yes uh, but certain things were different right that's what I said prophets are the variables God is the constant La ilaha illallah. there's no God except the one true God that is the constant prophets came with different times there's a difference for example between Moses and Jesus there's a difference between Moses and Muhammad right so be careful because we're trying to kind of side parties here and that's the problem right Islam doesn't believe in Jesus versus Muhammad Islam believes in Jesus and Muhammad and Moses and Abraham and all the prophets right so there's a difference so yes he was a Muslim when Muslims say he was a Muslim that yes he was sub a submitter to God and if you have a problem with him being a submitter to God then you know I don't know I think you agree too now the definition Okay, of Islam was he a Muslim in the sense that he denied, you know, being himself God, and did he uh, preach the Trinity, and did he teach Christian concept? And that's what's debatable, right? So, where did these words from Ignatius come from? Well, from his own self, right? There's no proof that it came from Jesus whatsoever, or that it came from God. Okay, of course, Christian doctrine is in the inspiration uh, from God of humans, and there's, you know, that's kind of changed over uh, time, where you know it was inerrant and then you know it was uh, inspiration through uh, you know imperfect people um, and so on and so forth uh, that's also debatable within the Christian circles Christian faith was clearly established I beg to defer and one thing why 1517 a Protestant uh, the Reformation right there was also many theological debates around that right what did the Catholics before 1517 and quite before sometimes the so-called Catholic Church was what was leading. The so-called theological understanding of the Catholic Church was very prevalent, and you cannot deny that. History attests to it. What did the Catholic Church believe? Well, I'm kind of sure what, what you're trying to reach. I didn't really go to the next videos, but I'm sure that you'll point some things in the Quran and say, look, God didn't know what he talked about. He talks about the Trinity, you know, um, Mary, Jesus, and God. No, it does not say Trinity. Nowhere that Trinity is the Mary, Jesus, and God. I really ask you to give me the proof for that. It talks about people saying, did I tell you to worship, right? God is asking, did I tell you to worship your, your mom, people to worship you and your mom as God's other besides me? 
that's all he's saying. If we're not saying a trinity of God, Jesus, and Mary. Okay, so we have to be careful, right? Because the theological understanding of some Christians at that time, and that's what he was addressing. Okay, it did not address the Protestant, for example, but it it, it certainly does some issues. But the theological understanding was that people used to pray to Mary. They still do the Rosary and so many other things, right? People have beliefs of that time. People used to pray to idols. People used, that's what it came. That's why it says because when you pray to Jesus, for example, when you pray to Mary, that's what you're doing. You're associating a partner with God because only God is supposed to be prayed to. That's what it talks about when it talks about did I tell you to worship Mary, uh, your mom, or you know, or you besides me? There's no such thing as the Trinity in uh, the Quran saying that it's Mary, Jesus, and the Father. It does say uh, in a certain other verse to stop saying three. Okay, but it does not mention whatsoever anything about Mary, about the Holy, uh, about uh, uh, Jesus, and about the Father. So that's one point. Please, how much did Muhammad know of the Christian faith? You said 892 is the first Christian scriptures in Arabic. But I mean, I want to correct you, and some of the Muslims as well, because in Bukhari and Muslim, it's related uh, that, uh, uh, that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had a cousin, okay, and his cousin uh, was transcribing. Script, scriptures from the Christian faith, uh, scriptures from the uh, Hebrew and and, and uh, language into Arabic. Okay, so if he was literate and he knew how to read, yes, he did have access to some of the scriptures. He could have told them, but his meaning was very short with uh, with his cousin, and um, you know, certain Orientalists have attacked that point definitely. And that's you know another discussion we can talk, but we have to be careful that you know we want to. I mean, you're a scholar, and so you should know your, your facts straight. That there was scriptures that he could have accessed if he was, but he didn't know how to read. He didn't have the time to go and study these scriptures. And if you look at contrast, the beliefs in Christianity and the beliefs in Islam are totally different, right? Islam is different. Christianity is different. Islam did not come and you know, uh, kind of relate or refer to some issues that are wrongly understood from Christianity. So we, we need to be careful with that. Um, some Muslims say, well, no, the Quran has to be accurate because it's from God. You know, well, you know, that's some Muslims can say that, but you know, I'm sure we have our proof as to why the Quran is accurate, and that's a big contrast between, uh, you know, of why the Bible is not accurate or why the Bible is accurate. Um, if Christianity is false, would not Allah know what Christians believe? Um, definitely, Allah knows what Christians believe. That's why it's. And he knows what everyone else. That's why it's a very general statement. There's no God worthy of worship except Allah. Whether you pray to Mary, whether you pray to whoever, whether you take the laws from Ignatius or from the early church fathers, which have no authority, okay, based on, uh, then doesn't come from God, does not come from Jesus, okay, then we have to be careful. Same with some Muslim scholars, for example. You can't just follow blindly a Muslim scholar because he's a human. Then you are actually associating someone with God, right? So that's what the Quran says. If you follow your scholars blindly, you end up astray. You cannot follow them blindly. You have to have some certain knowledge. They have to have proof from the Quran or the Sunnah from the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon. They cannot just say that, hey, let me come up with a you know certain uh, you know new laws that come from God, or let me you know I think this is what God. Now, I want to refer to one thing because you said that Christianity was established. And this is something very important going back to scriptural uh, reference. If you, we look at uh, the church tradition at the time of, of, of the Protestant Reformation, there was not just, there was not just, and this is what you believe right now, you're from the Protestant side, you're not Orthodox, you're not a Catholic. Um, There's not just theological debates. There was also uh, textual debates, right? So this is, you're talking about 1528, uh, uh, Zwingli at the Bream Disputation uh, denied the revelation, uh, that revelation was the book of the New Testament. Okay, and this uh, you can find in uh, in Metzger, the canon of the New Testament, its origins, uh, significance, development. Um, the, um, there's many other disputation that uh, that took place. The six canons, uh, church tradition of the six disputed books. Martin Luther he condemned the Epistle of James, um, you know, and other things that he talks in in the introduction, and that's in the same book that I just mentioned right now. And there's other proofs that we can you know talk about. Um, but Christianity, I mean, I want you to get things straight because people, again, they'll just listen to him and say, look at this guy, he's so amazing, you know, he knows to read the Greek and same, you know, on the Muslim side, look at this Dr. Zakana, he knows how to quote all the Quranic verses, amazing, I'm just gonna, you know, just believe, right? You have to be careful, right? Because we need to get our facts straight. You said that Christianity was fully established. Christianity, no, it was not. 